another Photoshop tutorial from tutorvid.com. This tutorial is going to show you how to restore an old photograph like this into something that looks like this. This photo was sent to me by a viewer and uh, the photo is in relatively poor condition. You can see the emulsion is starting to peel off and there's a color cast and overall relatively low quality. But relatively speaking, it's uh, in pretty good condition. The subject is still easily visible and the fish, for example, is generally intact. It'll just take a little bit of time to repair a few different problems with the photo. So the first thing I like to do is to uh, get the color and contrast a little closer to what the final image is going to look like. So I'm going to create a curves layer and adjust the contrast you can see there's no blacks right now, so I'm going to pull that so there's some good black. And pull up the mid-tones. Maybe something like that for starters. And then you can see there's a fair bit of red and yellow in the image. So I'm going to create another curves layer. And go to my red channel. And pull that back a bit. I think in old photographs it's alright to leave them with a bit of color cast, since that's how old photos look but I think it's also to take a bit out so we can get a better view of the picture. I think I'll go to my blue channel and give it a little bit of blue. All right, if we look at the before and after, there's the before and here's what it looks like now. So maybe a little bit magenta in there. All right, I'll leave it like that for now. When editing photos like this, I always like to leave my bottom layer as my original untouched. So I'm going to create an additional layer with Control J and do all my editing on this layer or above layers so that I always have something to refer back to. And if you're using a new enough version of Photoshop, you can convert this layer into a smart object. And I recommend doing so. You can do that by right clicking on it and click Convert to Smart Object. And that allows you then, when we are adding, any of a number of different filters, then you'll be able to go back and edit those filters later on and adjust them and sort of fine tune them after your final image is complete. So with the smart layer or regular layer, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, go up to filter and noise and dust and scratches. And when you're using dust and scratches or many other different tools, you have this little box when you go over your image. If you click on the image, that's what will zoom into on your little preview here. And when you click and hold down, it'll show you an unedited version. And then when you let go, it'll show you what it looks like with these settings applied. So with dust and scratches, the threshold is going to be how easily the image is affected. At zero, everything will be affected. And 255, nothing will be affected. So it'll look at the difference between, for example, this uh, dark color and this light. And if there's enough change, then it'll uh, fix it. When we bring it down, you can see the threshold now is enough that that gets fixed. If it's too high, a scratch like that won't get fixed. And the radius looks at how big a scratch is it's going to fix. So if it's at zero, nothing gets fixed. And if it's at a high amount, like 100, and the threshold is low enough, then everything turns into a big blob. All right, so you need to find a bit of a happy medium here. What I like to do is turn the threshold on zero so everything is going to get fixed and radius is one so essentially nothing gets fixed and then zoom in on a problem area like this wee little scratch here and then I'm going to bring up my radius until that scratch disappears about there and then bring up my threshold until it stops working perhaps and then bring it back until it looks about right. There you can see now all these little white dots disappear and the scratches disappear. These larger ones stay there. If I zoom into the eyes, you can see the quality generally stays the same. If I, I'll zoom into my whole image here. I did that by pressing Control, Alt, and Zero. And if we look at the preview, you can see the quality of the eyes stays pretty much the same. So we're not reducing the, our image quality at all. Okay, so we're going to keep that radius of 5 and threshold of 10. It'll depend on how much resolution your image has and how bad the problems are in your image. 
So now we're going to take care of a few of these bigger problems, like these scratches on the fish. To do that, you have to be working on a rasterized layer, so we can't be working on our smart layer here. So I'm going to duplicate this layer with Control J and right click on it and say rasterize. So now it's not a smart layer anymore and I can use the patch tool which is what I'll use to get rid of these big problems. If it's spot healing brush may be what's showing so if you click and hold this tool you can go down to the patch tool. And then for that all you have to do is select a circle around a problem and then click and drag onto where you want it source content from. So this works pretty quick to do uh, large areas and because this image is fairly blurry to start with it helps in creating how accurate we have to be in our cloning. And there's the fish. If we zoom in you can see it's almost done. But if we look at the before and after on the fish uh, you can see it is generally looking pretty good. So we just have to do that same sort of technique for all the problem areas here. It's not so difficult, it's just time consuming. And important that you get good quality sample areas to use from and not sample from the same area all the time where you'll get sort of a repeating pattern that looks pretty clear that you've done some editing on the photo. And be careful with the clone tool, it's especially easy to get carried away and create a sort of a repeating abstract pattern which doesn't look abstract at all in the end so it's good to work with a patch tool as it randomizes a bit more. should add that I like the patch tool better than the than the spot healing brush tool because you can because you can choose your source a little easier but if you're just doing little bits of color the brush is pretty good as well and also makes it for pretty quick edits All right, so after a while of editing, I'll show you the before and after. There's the before, uh, there's the so far after. If I zoom in, there's the before and after. And you can see now it's a little more clear that there's a, still quite a bit of a yellow tone to it. So I'm going to go to my second curves layer and adjust the blues a bit more and add a bit more blue. and pull back on the reds a bit and bring up the lightness again and we can also bring back the saturation a bit on the overall photo I'm going to create a new curves layer just to start over and have a little bit more room to work with And you can see on the edges, uh, it's obviously scanned a little bit with extra room, so I'm going to crop it and just cut off the very edges. Now, if part of the photo has a different problem than another part, like in this photo, it looks like maybe this top half is a little bit yellower than the bottom half. So I'm going to create a specific curves layer to fix that. So go down and create another curves layer. And to adjust a certain area of color, a nice easy way to do that is grab this hand tool. And then you can just click on your photo and drag and that'll select the pixels that are underneath it and just adjust those pixels. So select your blue and I'm going to give this area a little bit more blue. So you can just click on it and then drag it up. And if you have your info tab showing, which is over here, you can also see the numbers. If we're trying to make this uh, sort of a middle gray, you can see right now that the red number is much higher than the other two numbers. So we should bring down the reds a bit. So I'm going to 
jump over to my red channel, click and pull it down a bit. And now you can see they're all still maybe a little bit too much red, but it's uh, pretty close. Go back to my layers and click on my layer mask. And then with G, the gradient tool, I'm going to click the straight white to black gradient. And for this one, I think I'll have the straight line gradient. And then you can draw a gradient so that it sort of only affects part of the photo and do a few trials. If we do a before and after, you can see there just the top half is getting this fix. Maybe it should be a little longer. Now you can see uh, this image has been stored in an album or behind a frame or something and along the edge there's a bit of a color tone change. Either you can do a layer mask and create a curves layer for that to edit just the inside or the outside or you can just clone and I think that's what I'll do. It is sometimes just as easy. So I'm going to use the clone tool with the S button and just quickly fill it in with color from the rest of the photo. Since it's just on the edge and there's not much detail, it'll be pretty accurate. All right, I'm going to add one more curves layer to adjust the overall contrast. And I'm going to flip over to the red layer and bring out, take out some more red and perhaps a little blue again. All right, so I think I'll leave it there for now. I'll show you the before and after. There is the before. And there's the after. If you want to download this tutorial or check out more tutorials, head over to tutorvid.com.